What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got some teases of the new starter decks. Yeah, that's right. Those starter decks which are coming around in about a month's time after set three. We know we're getting a green, black, and purple starter deck. Well, we've now got news of them. Now, the translations we're going to be looking at here come from Raymond Wong Wyman over on Facebook. Sorry for the pronunciation. And it must be pointed out that the images put on the official website are very small and a little bit blurry. So yes, we have translations and that's awesome. But we're going to be flinging through the green starter deck today. Purple and black videos to come. And we're going to be going through what we know. But please bear in mind we are going off very blurry translations, so we're going to have a quick look at the cards with the translations we've got. These are subject to change, that is very important to point out, and we will have probably a closer look at these when we have the translations confirmed. So starting off then, we have got a Tamer, Izzy Izumi. Now we've got a two-cost green Tamer here, just like the Izzy Izumi from New Evolution, which was also a two-cost green tamer. And apparently what it does, obviously the security is that you play it without paying its cost. We, we know that. That's what they all do. During your turn, when an opponent's Digimon is rested, you may rest this tamer to gain one memory. And this really does follow in the trend of so many tamers we've seen lately, which give you extra memory. It's what a lot of tamers do. Now, the weird thing here is, it is when a Digimon gets rested one of your opponent's Digimon gets rested on your turn. But you got to remember here that we got so many ways of resting a Digimon. Obviously, if your opponent brings out a blocker to block one of your Digimon, they will have to rest it to block. And then, oh, look, now you get the extra memory. But bearing in mind, this is what green does. We've seen cards like Flower Cannon. Two-cost option card lets you rest one of your opponent's Digimon. The fact of the matter is that there are plenty, and we've seen this on so many green cards in the past, it really is one of the things that green cards tend to do. So this should, a lot of the time, not all the time, it should give you an extra memory every turn. And bearing in mind, we've seen nothing in the rules so far, and if I've missed something, please do let me know. But I can't think of anything of, off the top of my head at the moment that would stop you essentially stacking this. So if you've got three of these out, you play Flower Cannon to rest one of your opponent's Digimon, and obviously when they're resting, it means you can attack them and take them out. It means they can't block, etc. And you gain free memory doing so. That sounds pretty good to me. Now, we've also seen a level 3 Tentamon here. We've got a free cost to play normally, which is standard, zero cost to evolve, which is standard, and 2,000 power, which is on the lower end. And it's got a non-inheritable skill. When you play it, Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Digimon, add it to your hand. Otherwise, put it to the bottom of your deck. I love this. This is brilliant. This reminds me very much of the Gabimon from New Evolution, which has seen a whole bunch of play. Now, Gabimon lets you draw a card. That would include tamers and options. This basically lets you draw a card, but... You need to be playing a mono green deck. If you're not playing a mono green deck, this becomes way less good. And if you hit an option or a tamer card, you've kind of wasted the skill. Though it does have double the power of Gabumon. Not that that means much. It's still terrible. But it still has a little bit more power. So there's a nice little advantage. And the fact of the matter is, if you just want to get rolling and set up in the early game as you should... This is really good. Remember, we've already seen that a bunch of green Digimon, well, some of them evolve more easily and more cheaply than others, but then you've got all of those Digimon like the entire Argamon line that have got that download skill, lets you rest one of your Digimon to lower the cost of evolving your Digimon. So if green are basically running around and taking advantage of the fact that they are cheaper to evolve, then the biggest hurdle becomes drawing all of your Digimon cards so you can actually have them to evolve up into. And oh look, this seems to solve that problem pretty gosh darned well. Now the level 4 we've got here is Kabuterimon. 
And we've got a six. We've got a level four. Now, six cost to play normally on a level four is... I'll be honest with you, it is on the higher end. It, it's moderately expensive. But the one cost to evolve is great. We expect level four Digimon to cost two to evolve into. So this is an example of what I was saying a moment ago of having those Digimon that evolve up more cheaply. As for the 5,000 power on a level 4, it's it's not bad. It's not particularly amazing. It's not particularly terrible. It's, it's fine. Frankly, it's okay. But it has again got a non-inheritable skill. Blocker. And when you attack, you reduce your memory by 2. Oh, look. Green have got themselves one of those blockers like we saw in the original starter decks. Things like Grizzlymon. Now, Grizzlymon was 5 cost to play normally, 2 cost to evolve, rather than 6 cost to play normally, 1 cost to evolve. They all were. But you're still talking, well, and 5,000 power rather than 6,000 power. This is a little bit weaker. But you're still talking blocker, and when you attack, you lose 2 memory. These are Digimon that are not supposed to attack. It's not the goal. These are Digimon that are in there as cheap, nice blockers. Now, what is interesting, in New Evolution, we did actually get Woodmon. And Woodmon was basically Digimon's way of going, look, Green didn't get a starter deck that had these standard blockers. Therefore, have this in the first set. So we got Woodmon. And Woodmon, you'll notice, is identical to Grizzlymon, other than color, artwork, and name of the Digimon. So does that mean we're going to be getting one of these for each of the colors? Well, the answer is we don't know. We've not seen any level fours from the black or purple starter decks, but it would make sense. Remember that one of the goals of the starter decks is to have them playable out of the box, which means that we really would like to have a blocker in every starter deck, just like we had in the first round of starter decks, so, I am going to imagine that we've got one exactly like this in the other two decks. We will have to wait and see, but that seems like a pretty sound prediction to me. And then we've got mm, Hercules Kabuterimon. This is our lovely level 6 here. And, of course, we saw Hercules Kabuterimon. That was one of the ones we got in New Evolution, one of those big level 6s. It's back here. It is the focal point of the particular deck. So what we've got here is a 12 cost to play normally, 4 cost to evolve, 12,000 power. Now, the 12 cost to play normally is more expensive than the average of 11. The 4 cost to evolve is more than we usually see on level 6s. But remember the ones from the first starter decks all evolved for 4? So I imagine that that is, and I can tell you for the level 6s, it is the case for the other two as well. I can imagine that that's going to be kind of the case in starter decks to keep everything on a nice level playing field. We don't want the second lot of starter decks to be massively overpowered compared to the first because people might try playing them against each other and that would be sad. But I tell you what, the 12,000 power I'm in. This is kind of like the last Hercules Kabuteri Mon, except it's one cost more to evolve. And it's 2,000 extra power. Frankly, that is a trade-off that I am willing to make. This sounds pretty nice to me. But what does it actually do? Well, in terms of skills here, apparently, and again, do remember that these are subject to change, we've got piercing. Piercing says that when you take out a resting Digimon, you also perform a security check. And it is kind of interesting to note that the Hercules Kabuteri Mon from New Evolution also had piercing. Does that mean that every Hercules Kabuteri Mon we get from now until the end of time will have piercing? Uh, maybe. Certainly there is a little bit of a trend starting already. So that's kind of a cool thing. And then, now, the second thing we've got here is slightly strange to me. It is a new keyword skill, Digiburst. And essentially, Digiburst is an effect which comes in when you remove X number of Digivolution sources from it. So, Hercules Kabuteri Mon here has got Digiburst 2, which means you need to remove two evolution sources to activate the skill. And it rests one of your opponent's Digimon. It's like Flower Cannon. 
And Flower Cannon, of course, is one of those green cards that sees a huge amount of play. And remember that Resting Digimon is very much the kind of thing that green Digimon like to do. Is it worth giving up two evolution sources to do this? I'm honestly not convinced that it is. Like, don't get me wrong, sometimes it will be. Remember that resting a Digimon means you're allowed to attack it. General rule, you're not allowed to attack an active Digimon. They've got to be resting. So that's an advantage. And similarly here, there will be times where you need to attack to win the game, for instance. And that's a little bit of a pain because your opponent is going to block you. So what you essentially do here is you digiverse and then your opponent basically loses their blocker and you're good to go. Now I am slightly confused by digiverse and we are going to need some rulings on this in the future. D can you just trigger this whenever you want? It doesn't seem to have to be attacking from what we've seen. Is this limited to once during your turn? Again, that's not the translation we've got. And if this isn't limited to once during your turn, and, you know, level six is if you've evolved up properly, and we've already seen that in green that can be an easy thing to do, and you've got four evolution sources, you can essentially do this twice, rest two of your opponent's Digimon, and then we're talking. To be honest, 12,000 power plus piercing is great. Bearing in mind that you combo this with your Digiburst skill, you rest a Digimon, then you attack it, then piercing lets you attack the security as well. I do think there is a lot to like about this Hercules Kabuteri Mon here. I do think there is a huge amount of potential in this card, and I do think it's one that could absolutely make an impact in terms of the metagame as a whole. I worry that the Digiburst is a little bit too kind of one and done, but then by the same token... I can rest one of my opponent's Digimon, then attack it with a 12,000 power Digimon, and because I got piercing, I also get a security attack. That seems fun to me, ladies and gentlemen. That seems fun to me. So that's what we know about the green starter deck so far. Like I said a couple of times, these translations are subject to change, but we've got a sneak peek of the green starter deck. What am I going to do? Not show it to you? No, that's not how I roll. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to know what you think about this. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing, as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.